coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. We have the USDA crop report coming out. We stand to make multi-millions. We expect to see the market fall. If it doesn't happen, well, you're going to see me carry it out on a stretcher probably. Obviously, over the past week, we've had quite a dramatic pullback in the market. It's actually probably the worst four or five days in, uh, in a long while. Yeah, we've been, getting, we've been getting pissed on recently. So I'm going live today, which means I'm going to be trading with Real Money. Having introduced Leticia to this game, we've really gotten the bug into her. She's becoming a market junkie. <laughs> yeah, stop. Hello, Richard. Hey, it's Jim. Uh, I want to touch base with you on SanDisk. Uh, I'm sure you've been reading the papers. There's been a lot of uh, down days with regards to the NASDAQ, the Dow, and of course our position with SanDisk. The last couple of days and weeks, there's been a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, most of it's due to the credit crunch. Um, you know, there's still large banks out there coming out and announcing they have huge losses on their books. It's been scaring the markets and it's been scaring investors. I'm sure you've been reading the Wall Street Journal and uh, been seeing the news. There has been a lot of volatility in the market. We do expect that to continue until the end. Not just are the markets down, the weather's bad, but also have a cold, so this will be very interesting talking to these guys. They'll probably think I'm on my deathbed here. Yeah, yeah, I've got a bit of a cold, but uh, there's a big difference between a broker that sticks his head in the sand and, and doesn't talk to his clients when things are going bad, and someone that picks up the phone and speaks with them. Rob, your favorite broker on Wall Street. What's going on, bud? Obviously, over the past week, we've had quite a dramatic yes, pullback sir. in the market. It's actually probably the worst four or five days in, uh, in a long while on Wall Street. So uh, we've been kind of dealing with that and kind of getting people on the phone and reassuring them that everything's going to be okay and, and let them know kind of what our plan is yeah. and what our target goal is. Yeah, I know you're not thrilled with the performance, and, you know, I'll be the first one to stand tall and take the blame for that. Yeah, we've been getting, we've been getting pissed on recently. So, you know, what I want to do is just reassure you that no one's lost any confidence around here. Uh, I've been wrong in the short term. Um, obviously, want to keep this thing on the table a little bit longer, and the time frame has extended itself probably till uh, probably till June. Next time we get a pop, I'm probably going to take uh, a lot of the position off the table, book you some profits, and uh, wait for another pullback. FXCM is one of the largest retail broker dealers in the foreign exchange currency market, which just blew up over the last four or five years. Before this, foreign exchange was strictly the domain of hedge funds, banks, big broker dealers like Goldman Sachs and all the other big boys. With the advent of the internet, we brought in this whole new class of traders from the uh, retail side to the point now where they are between 10 and 20 percent of the market. I've been on the demo for a week now. It's been going pretty well. Um, I mean, I. I made some mistakes. I think my main problem is more emotional. You know, I need to, it's not so much which trades I get into, but I need to get a little bit more emotionally detached. I'm going to be meeting with Boris in a little bit. We're going to go over some of the trades I made on the demo, just to go over some of my mistakes, some of the things I did that were good. I don't care. I can't believe you never stop. This thing could move 100 points, 200 points against you in a blink of an eye. You're going into this thing without a stop? Letitia is a very capable student. She makes mistakes like everybody else, but the great thing about her, which is a good sign of any good trader, is willingness to adapt and improve. But remember, a number one rule of trading is once you are in profit, mm -hmm. you don't give the profit back, yeah. right? Well, I traded down about 100 pips, right. so I just, I figured I might as well get out now to like minimize my losses. With Leticia, first we had her learn the mechanics of what drives this market, and she's very, very good at that. Then we put her on a demo account. And now, she's finally ready to trade real money. We'll see how well she does. Big day today, huh? Yeah. Money on the line. First time we're gonna trade, and, and you couldn't have chosen better a better day. Ready? 
Today is a huge day in the foreign currency markets because today is the Fed interest rate decision meeting. So the markets are waiting with bated breath to find out exactly how much the Fed is going to lower rates. The question is more if they're going to cut the interest rates by 25 basis points or by 50. It's going to be a really market moving announcement. There's potential to make a lot of money, to lose a lot of money as well. I've been on demo programs for weeks, if not months. This afternoon, I'm actually going to trade money. So to me, it's going to be a really important day. We have the USDA crop report coming out, which comes out once a year, and it's a critical number. It's going to tell us what the estimate is for next year's crop. No, it's not. Nobody knows the number. Billions of dollars have been bet on this number. It's basically the culmination of the entire year. This number is make or break for us. The market was very, very jittery. We have set up a bearish position. We expect to see the market fall. If that happens, we stand to make multi-millions. If it doesn't happen, well, you're going to see me carry it out on a stretcher, probably. No, no we're going to get it over. Two and a half, two and a half, three. four and a half on your point. That's four and a half on your point. Six fifty five. We've opened dramatically lower. There's terror in the air. Today is the crop report. People are going to probably be shoring up their positions, making sure they're going into what could be an upsetting day with a the position they're comfortable with. There's no telling. If we all had a crystal ball and we knew how the day was going to be, then we wouldn't be here anymore. We'd be retired on a beach. <laughs> Is very important for you. Seriously? Murph, what did you say? Would I lie to you? No. We've got some cross currents going on between dry weather and Brazil. The market has been exploding in the last week and a half. We're scratching our heads. We don't really understand why. We're not here to fight the market or anything like that. But the fact is, the market can remain illogical a lot longer than I can remain solvent for. It's been a long couple of days, very little sleep. We have set up our positions, and we're about to find out if we're right or wrong. Hi, Brett Hickey here, here to meet Bob. I went down to the NASDAQ to meet with a friend of mine who runs the Canadian markets and meet with one of the senior vice presidents who runs the global markets as well. Some of our portfolio companies trade on the OTC or over-the-counter network and I want to see what the differences are being on the NASDAQ and what the minimum requirements are. Uh, so I, I the NASDAQ is a stock exchange. It's a digital stock exchange. They help you get compliant. They help you with regulation. All the different things that are required to be a public company, they help hey, serve Brad. you. Hey, how are you, Jordan? Good to see you, Brett. Good to see you. Glad you can make it. Want Thanks. To, uh, Bob McCooey. Hey, hey, I'm Bob. Bob. Brett Hickey. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Today is an educational opportunity to meet with Bob McCooey, who's the Senior Vice President of Capital Markets, and Jordan Sachs, who is in charge of business development for Canadian clients for the NASDAQ. Let's go on a little tour. They took me through the entire building, met with all their different divisions and floors. These fellows work on what we refer to as the Market Intelligence Desk. Learned a lot about what they provide for services, met with the people that actually provide support to the companies to really put things into basic English for a lot of the senior executives as to what's going on in the market and why. You know, they won't have all the details. So whether it's the general counsel or the CFO, or in this case it's the IRO, who's doing the intelligence gathering. Learned a lot about how they help companies get publicity, get promotions. Some of our banks actually might keep private for now right. and then look to bring them to the NASDAQ to promote some additional liquidity. It's interesting because as you're talking about it, you can just see it. You see everybody go by in Times Square. It's really a great publicity medium in itself. You know, being able to get to the NASDAQ for a small bank would be a real differentiating factor. So as we're growing some of our small banks, you know, that's uh, one of the things I wanted to find out about today is what are the minimum thresholds to get onto the NASDAQ. Let's walk in and we, we, can, we can sit down and talk some more specifically about some of your questions. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. The markets rallied here. We got to sell stuff at such high prices that all that stuff is just absolutely collapsing. Come and relax. relax. Went down to the NASDAQ's media room where they actually do the closing bell. No one in the quarter foot. 
We are very, very quiet right now as we all await. You know, usually report days, either they get really busy because people perceive the news with getting in or getting out of a position, or you could just sit there and be completely dormant for the entire day waiting for the news. I don't know how it's going to be today. It doesn't look like, uh, if you look around the pit, nobody looks like they're checking numbers and looking up at the board, and we're basically unchanged right now. Hey, Jan 30 foot. The market's rallying up here a little bit. The uh, trade just came in and bought some upside calls. Some people are bullish, some people are bearish. Waiting for this number, you, you got betting on both sides of this thing. What? Uh-oh. Hey. Trading, Larry. Bye. I'm gonna head in there, we're gonna be very busy here, and then we have the report coming out any minute. All right, guys, so uh, I just want to have a quick little uh, year-end chat with you, go over what happened this past year. And uh, myself, Jimmy, Gary, and Buck are kind of have a sit-down, a little powwow. It's only natural, you know, it's the end of the year to, uh, to get together and to discuss last year uh, what worked out well, what didn't work so good, all that type of stuff, any kind of constructive criticism he has. Account-wise, you guys have killed it again. You've opened up a ton of accounts. I know that uh, the... Uh, the whole Sandus thing uh, turned out to be a thorn in our sides. So we've all gone through it, you know, in all the years I've been doing this, you know, I've taken a couple hits and uh, it tends to take the wind out of your sails a little bit. Hindsight being crystal clear, we would have sold Sandus, get 58, 60 bucks, took profits and ran. Obviously, it didn't work out as a fairy tale. You know, we were looking out for the client's best interest. You know, at the end of the day, we could easily sold it, racked up a bunch of commission and moved on, but um, we were trying to hit the ball of the park. What do you guys think you need to improve on? Probably diversify ourselves a little bit better. Uh, we definitely put all our eggs in one basket with SanDisk, and you know, with regards to SanDisk, uh, we have a lot of clients in it and uh, a lot of good guys. You know, so we continue to uh, do our homework and make sure that's a good investment. Uh, a lot of these guys are long term, so you know they're going to be happy when that stock works out. Going forward, the new accounts maybe branch out, have some more other exposure, and we'll get back to basics. And that's me and Jimmy getting back on the phones, and uh, especially me and bringing a new business, and Jimmy raising new money, and. You know, me and Garrett going toe-to-toe -to -toe and opening accounts. and I know what I plan to do, and that's just get back to being focused on one thing, and that's the fundamentals of this business. It's, it's getting leads, it's opening accounts, it's getting new business, it's raising money. I've got to get back to opening 10, 12 accounts a month, and, you know, that's just hard work. That's just picking up the phone, making dials, and pitching all day. Keep pounding the tables, guys. That's all I can tell you. You're doing everything You know, right. we probably won't get stuck in a stock like this again. We'll probably try to do things a little bit differently, but... You know, at the end of the day, we're still going to try to make our clients as much money as possible. Going forward, new business, new business, new business, and if you guys keep on pressing, you know, obviously the numbers will eventually fall in our favor and, and, and luck will come our way. In this case, you could trail more. Like so I'm going live today, which means that I won't be trading on the demo anymore, and I'm going to be trading with real money. I think it's a pretty good day to go live since this afternoon the Fed will be announcing whether they're cutting interest rates or not and by how much. There's a lot riding on this because the market is, has a 50-50 bet, essentially, on whether they're going to cut interest rates by 25 basis points or 50 basis points. I don't want to get into some crazy trade without having a thought-out plan beforehand. The countdown begins, right? Ooh, they deliver a half point cut. Wow. 50 basis points to five and a quarter percent. So they're definitely being very proactive. So I was actually long the year since the morning, but as soon as the announcement came out, I saw my PL go up, flash up, up, up. And then I decided to get long the pound and those two currencies just skyrocketed. So at the peak, I was up like $1,600, $1,700. That's within like, I don't know, two, two three minutes. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> You're in the money, right? Are you trying yeah. your stop? Yeah. I started seeing a reversal and I told myself, I can't lose this money I just made. So I got out. I got in here, got out here, and then because I saw it started reversing and trading the other way. I actually do really like foreign exchange. I love the fact that it combines fundamental and technical analysis. You get to learn about the politics and economics of different countries. It just feels very like open to the world, which is something that I really like. 
Having introduced Letitia to this game, we've really gotten the bug into her. I already see the glint in her eye. She is becoming a market junkie. I managed to keep about $1,200, which, I mean, to me, to make $1,200 in like four minutes is pretty incredible. <laughs>It's really one of the major reasons you become a public company. It's really important to be able to tell their story, and we, we want to help them tell their story. I sat down with Bob and Jordan to learn some more specific details of what it takes for a company to go public on the NASDAQ and how it could apply to some of the companies that we have right now that we're invested in. What are the minimum thresholds for, let's say, a, a you know, small commercial bank? to get onto the NASDAQ. There's a number of different criteria in terms of amount of equity that's inherent in the business, mm -hmm. um, the earnings, um, making sure you meet corporate governance. We, we think it's very important to help companies moving from being private to being public and all the way through the life cycle of being a public company. In today's world, with the benefits that NASDAQ's providing, especially for a private equity fund like ours, being able to have good market data everywhere at your fingertips and all the companies that we're invested in is very valuable. Yeah, and one of the great things about NASDAQ is you'd be in the company of the vast majority of the regional and small community banks. Uh, since that's the, really the home of NASDAQ. About almost 25% of our companies are financials. The number came out, it's a little bit lower than the market had expected. Markets rallied here. Not so bad for us, it's okay, because we got to sell stuff, switch high prices, that, all that stuff is just absolutely collapsing in. So this validated what we had been looking for in our forecast for Orange. And our fund ended up having a very good year. There's a few clients in the cotton business that'll just say, buy them. You don't even have to say how many. That means buy them. It's one of those trades that everybody wants a piece of. There'll be guys screaming, sold 500, sold 500, sold another 500. So you'll rack up huge volume. And a big order, you make big commission on. That's the way it works. It's been an exhausting couple of weeks, an exhausting year. But the crop's a little bit smaller than expected. We'll see how the Brazilian crop straightens out for next year. All in all, a pretty decent day. Why don't we go in the studio and we can just show you a little about how that works. There we go, this is it. Went down to the NASDAQ's media room where they actually do the closing bell and close out the stock market for the day. This is signing, so one day hopefully this will be live. Sure. <laughs> in the future, my hope is to continue to build our firm. You know, we recently opened an office in Dallas. Our business has really grown, so I'm going to continue to be focused on finding good companies, increasing our deal flow, raising additional capital. Good. It's been about four years since I started this business and it's great to look back and see what we've accomplished. When I left investment banking, a lot of people thought I was crazy. You know, 26 years old, starting a private equity and venture capital firm, investing in these companies at my age. I took a risk, I borrowed money from friends to live and start this company and we've become what I would now call finally a success story. You know, we have $100 million under management, we've done it. People really can take the entrepreneurial route and make it. You know, you can take the risk and it pays off. At the end of the day, look, I'm a guy from a small town in Canada. I grew up with the dad as a high school teacher, and, you know, this is the American dream. opportunities ahead in the world of private equity are really endless. You can do anything. You just have to be very focused. You commit to it and you get it done. And that's what we set out to do. So I love the business and hopefully it'll be good things to come. So we crop numbers behind us and our fund ended up having a very good year. 
gives me a chance now to take a well-needed break. And then I start over next year, trying to figure out where the orange juice market is headed. Our fund is now over $50 million under management and growing. Tonight's gonna be a great night. It's my 40th birthday. We're going to a club in the city. I invited everybody from the floor. We're going to four o'clock in the morning, everybody. I have had such a fortunate Wall Street career. I think I always have some involvement with markets. It is that kind of job. It is all consuming at all times. The floor is a very different place. I'm not working in the kind of environment that most would equate Wall Street with. You don't have to be a stuffed shirt to work down there. Everybody's just a little bit more down to earth and a little bit more accepting of everybody else. It's a different place than Wall Street. And so as long as I have it, I'll keep going there. It's been a little tough, you know, adjusting to like a professional life. It's a big change from life at NYU. So at this point, I just don't know if I'm ready to settle down for this specific job or if there's other fields that I do want to explore. When I look back in the past six months since graduation, I learned a lot and I was offered a lot of opportunities. I met some amazing people, you know, very successful, but you know, they've worked extremely hard to get to where they are today. Everyone on Wall Street wants to succeed. They're hungry, they want more always, and you have to be very ambitious. It's something that's become obvious to me. Things are not gonna be given to you and you have to fight for it. Any job on Wall Street, it's crazy hours. You have to sacrifice a lot, and I just don't know if I'm ready to make that sacrifice yet. When I look back at my last three years on Wall Street, I'm certainly happy I made the decision to, to come up from Jacksonville. I feel like I probably got more opportunities here to make business relationships that will service me for my entire career. I think I'm a lot wiser, you know? This punch in the gut is gonna be a, a lesson learned down the road. I'll never turn my back on it. I still think it's gonna work out. We gave it a short amount of time, you know? Six months, we thought our hopes and dreams were gonna come true, and it didn't. But, you know, we battled through it. I love Wall Street. There's nothing I'd rather be doing, and I plan on doing this for a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. Little Wall Street warrior for you, buddy? Huh? How cool is that? Three dates, three dates in, row. in a row. Three days. Three dates in a row, three different girls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were all six and a half, sevens, so, ranging doable. from a six to a seven. Oh, no. I, just, <laughs> I hope this tries.